Lost it up. Nice pass to set things up. Uh, I'm not sure that wasn't an offensive foul, but take it when you can get it. Yeah, lots of time. Screen coming. Count the basket. Oh, it's going the other way. Five seconds. Both teams tweaking their lineups. Here come some changes. A oh, bad pass, and the Mystics have it. On the Mercury, come up with the steal. Layup try, gets it to go. Could have been more. A lot of contact, but no foul. As my mother would say to the defender, A for effort, F for results. Nothing going here on that drive. It's Deladon, 4-3, shot off the mark. Good defense. Just because you're an elite shooter doesn't mean you need to shoot the ball every possession. Maybe give a head fake, crack into the defender, get to the free throw line, see the ball go in the hole. Now a shot rejected. Sent a message on that one, Ed. And the rebound taken by the Mercury. That's me, that's me. Slam dunk. Feed the big fella. Point to the passer. So good when you get everybody involved, in particular your bigs. You get them going, they'll run the court faster, and guess what? They'll set harder screens because they're actually in the game. Layup chance. A beautiful feed, but she couldn't finish. Scores. Two points. Take them any way you can get them. Nothing going here on that drive. From straight on, she'll fire a three. Yes. Not everybody possesses this power, but wow, what court awareness. A shot at the buzzer, and it's no good as time runs out on the first quarter of play. One quarter down, long way to go. So buckle up, it's wide open. Well, first off, I'm gonna take my analytical hat off and then put my fan hat on. This has been a blase first quarter. Not good, not bad, right in between. Let's see how both teams come out and try to adjust themselves in the second half. Oh, Aaron Pass says it's taken away. Come on, let's dig in. Let's really build this lead. Trying to cash in. Shot's no good. The drive right to the basket. Here's the shot. Denied. Just erasing mistakes left and right.
Has a look. Rebound grabbed by Washington. This one blocked down low from in close. Count the basket inside. We get a whistle and a timeout as they'll get a minute to regroup and talk things over. New blood coming in for both sides. Walsh it up. Nice finish at the rim. Clearly not afraid of the spotlight here because that was not an easy look. Here's Tolliver for three. That's how you defend. And look, sometimes you don't have it going every single night. Maybe utilize yourself as a decoy and get some teammates involved with your passing. Count it. A belated congratulations to Dewana Bonner along with Candace Dupree of the Fever. The couple has had quite an eventful last two years. In 2017, Bonner gave birth to twin girls. And then in 2018, she returned to the Mercury and had an all-star campaign averaging 17 points per game. And from somebody who's about to have his first child, you go, girl. Here comes the screen. Has a chance. And scores. Nice move, Jay. Two points. Take them any way you can get them. Green coming. To the rim. And scores. You see, here's why versatility is so imperative for your offensive repertoire. If you're a one-trick pony as a defender, I know exactly how to defend you because you only do one thing. But if you have versatility, then the coach can put you in multiple looks within the offense, and then you can get it any way you want it. Here comes the screen. Lost it up. Perfect feed to set up the basket. Well, when you play for each other and not just for yourself, that's when great things happen. You essentially lose yourself in what the team is trying to accomplish. It's called unselfish basketball. And there's nothing more beautiful than rewarding your teammate with a nice pass and letting them finish for two or three points. Both coaches dipping into their reserves. Changes coming onto the floor. Let's go, defense. And number six. Watch the screen, watch the screen, watch. 
Deladon for three, and she knocks it down. And in today's game, you have to make shots like that. Nice work draining it from deep. It's good. Woo, did you see that? Eyes to the rim, and the rest was all net. Top of the key. She'll fire a three. And Griner with the rebound. Late heave to beat the buzzer. That's it. First half has come to an end. The Mercury in possession of the lead. Tight game through the first two quarters as we resume play here in the third. Come on, where you at? Where you at? Layup try. Lays it up and in. Beautiful. In the paint, you need to finish just like that. The shot here, blocked. That kid can block out the sun, Ed. Layup chance. A lot of contact, no whistle. The Mystics get it back. The follow won't go either. Yeah, I got ball. From in close, gets to the basket and scores. Bodies bouncing all around on that layup with the offense winning that battle. But if the defense keeps up that kind of pressure, good things are bound to happen. Nothing going here on that drive. Trying to cash in, knocks it down from mid-range. Elena Deladon, the dawn of the game. An all-star five times in her seven WNBA seasons and the league MVP back in 2015. Fundamental shot right there. That's turned away by Griner. Just incredible timing on that swap. Walsh it up. Oh, nice pass there, but she couldn't finish. To the rim. Count the basket. A lot of contact. No foul. Now their head coach signals for a timeout. They'll regroup before the action continues. Both coaches hitting the reset button. Fresh legs coming onto the floor. That's turned away by Griner. Lost it up. Finishing inside the paint on that one. Man, that may not have been a gimme, 
but that layup at the rim definitely chips away at the pride of the defense. Layup trying, takes it right to the rim. A lot of contact there, but they say no foul. There's some players out there that like the freedom of space, and then we have the anomalies. We have the players who feel comfortable being uncomfortable, and almost the physicality of the game centers them and puts them right on balance every time. Here comes the screen. Layup chance. A oh, nice pass there, but she couldn't finish. Well, you can't finish with your right hand on the left side of the rim. You actually have to use your opposite hand. Steve Nass is one of the best at this. Different shots at different angles, high off the glass, expecting that there are trees down below with long wingspans that can block your shot. Able to convert inside. Has a look. Knocks it down. Off the step back. That ends the third quarter with the Mercury out in front. Mercury have it first as we start the fourth quarter. They have clearly been the better side so far. Jay, that's reflected on the scoreboard. Well, the cardinal rule in the game of sport is whenever you go into the fourth quarter, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. You have to play the game with the scoreboard saying 0-0. Zero, zero. And if you can win that game by double digits, then you've done your job in the fourth. It's Deladon, 4-3, and drains it. There is no doubt about it, Ed. This is the best isolation weapon versus lockdown defenders ever made. So tough to guard on that trip. From in close, and count the basket inside. As my mother would say to the defender, A for effort, F for results. Walsh it up. Oh, you could sense that coming. Mm, there is a premium market for players with that type of hand-eye coordination. Mixing things up. Hockey line substitutions. Both teams making changes. To the rim. Oh, beautiful feed, but she couldn't finish. Shot down low is blocked. Foot was on the line. It's a turnover. Down low. It's blocked. Blocking so many shots only gives your perimeter that much more confidence to really apply more pressure. Around the perimeter. Has a chance, and the rebound taken in by the Mystics. Here comes the screen. Five seconds to shoot. Here's a right corner three, and the rebound taken by Brittany Griner.
The pass set it all up. Now their head coach signals for a timeout. They'll regroup before the action continues. We have both squads set to make some moves right now. Shot clock, it's coming down to four. Now down to three. One of the shot clock. Hoist a three. Offensive rebound by the Mystics. On the follow. Way to stay with it. Uh, I'm not sure that wasn't an offensive foul. But take it when you can get it. A bad pass, and the Mystics have it. Tonight, it may not cost you. But in a playoff game, it will. Loss it up. Tough make through traffic. I was expecting the disc there, but way to fake that one and lay that one in. Oh, nice pass there, but she couldn't finish. And that's next level defense. The defender took away the pocket space of the shooter. Now, as a shooter, they shoot hundreds of shots each and every day from that pocket with consistency. Now you force them to change the angle or the positioning of that pocket, you're going to lower the chances of them making that shot. Oh, they left her all alone. 4-3. She got it. It's a three. And the lead is down to four. Just because someone is listening to you doesn't mean that they actually hear you. At the end of the game, when players get tired, they listen to what the assignment was, but they didn't hear what it was. Now the intentional foul as they get it with a little under 20 seconds left to play. Some players are built to handle these moments. On one end, you just sparked your team. And at the same time, you also got under your opponent's skin. Just want to manage through the emotions here and not take it too far. He hits the second, two for two on this trip. We get a whistle and a timeout as they'll take a moment to talk things over.
Deep three at the buzzer.
It's NBA action on EA Sports. I'm Ed Cohen. Great to be joined by Jay Williams for what should be a terrific matchup here tonight. From Smoothie King Center in downtown New Orleans, tonight, it's the New Orleans Pelicans taking on the Boston Celtics. Boston controls the tap to Hayward. To Cantor. Shot from the lane, won't go. Ball into the front court. He'll run the offense. Screen coming. Look out. Big finish at the rim. Whoa, he got up there. Just showing you that 40-inch vertical. Celtics have it. Hayward. Derek Favors rejects it. Sent a message on that one, Ed. Ball with the basketball. Leads a bucket. To Holiday. A pass taken away by the Celtics. Cantor to Marcus Smart. Here comes the screen. Boston with four to shoot. Gets a look. Can't hit. Doesn't have the touch. No good. To Marcus Smart. From the painted area, won't go down. Yo, big kudos to the defender. It seems like his mere presence in the paint was enough to make the offensive player miss the shot before he even got off the ground. Ball to Holiday. Down to five on the 24. To Ball. Beyond the arc for three. His first effort off the mark. Just because you're an elite shooter doesn't mean you need to shoot the ball every possession. Maybe give a head fake, crack into the defender, get to the free throw line, see the ball go in the hole. Favors to ball. Oh, Lonzo Ball missed his first. That one goes. Play is stopped. Timeout Boston as they'll talk things over in what's now a four-point game. Mixing things up. Hockey line substitutions. Both teams making changes. I got him, I got him. Shot. Off the mark. Well contested. To Young. Here comes the screen. Fires the three. Tough shot. Well defended. And 
watch him do the rest. Slam dunk. I know it can be demoralizing for a team not to see the ball go in the bucket, but now that the nightmare has stopped, it's time to pick up the energy. Trying to cash in. The screen sets him up for two. The pro game has really come down to PNRs. Let's see how the defense adjusts. The Celtics down to four in the shot clock. Message received. Well defended. Shoot or shoot. Period. I don't want to hear any excuses. That's why you're on the floor. You keep doing what you're doing with that superior confidence. Hey, check up, let's go. 20-footer at the buzzer. That's it for the first quarter. The Pelicans have the lead. First quarter complete, on to the second period. A little bit of a feeling out process so far. Well, first off, I'm gonna take my analytical hat off and then put my fan hat on. This has been a blase first quarter. Not good, not bad, right in between. Let's see how both teams come out and try to adjust themselves in the second half. Ball's controlled by Boston. Hayward to Howard. Superman, Dwight Howard. He's finally on the board, makes his first shot. As my mother would say to the defender, A for effort, F for results. Beasley to Holiday. Down to Young. Kicks it outside to Holiday for three. So the first points for him in this first half, and he knocks it down for three. Yeah, they really need him to get going. Really surprised that none of his teammates have been talking to him. This is when he needs him the most. They have to uplift him, help him continue to be confident on the court. Here comes the screen. Hayward to Howard. Superman, Dwight Howard. He's two for two now. You feel that? I see the confidence building. Whistle stops play, timeout New Orleans. They'll catch their breath in what's now a five point game. Both coaches dipping into their reserves. Changes coming onto the floor. I got ball, I got ball. I got ball. I'm here. ball to Favors. Has a chance. Favors shot, no good. It's easy, force guys into low percentage shots. That's the reason why we're big into stats. It was all provided to you before the game in the scouting report. Oh, great pass, setting up the basket. He's been doing this for years, the physicality in which he plays. No one wants to see that. You're going to leave the game with black and blue marks all over your body. To ball. Hey, 
Here comes the screen. Oh, Lonzo Ball. He is shooting well. He's made two-thirds of his shots. I don't know if the scouting report has made its way out here yet, but if anything, it says you need to not let him get that close to the rim. And he finishes at the rim. Man, that may not have been a gimme, but that layup at the rim definitely chips away at the pride of the defense. Lonzo Ball with the rock. Screen coming. Cruises inside for two. No doubt about where that one was headed. And he knocks it down. Jay, as key a move as you'll find in the NBA. And it is the new age triple threat. It does two things. Number one, it creates distance in a hurry. Number two, when you're stepping east to west while maintaining your dribble, which is a difference maker, it throws a defender off because now he's at your mercy and he's off balance. And it just may be, Jay, the biggest threat late in the shot clock. If you, especially if you add a hesitation to the move or if you look at the rim, you'll most time have the defender jumping out of his shoes. We wish defenders all the best in this game defending that. Shot by Lonzo there, no good. So the difference, three points as we've reached the break. Let's get you to our NBA Live studios in Orlando and hand it over to Jalen Rose for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Jalen. to the action here. The Pelicans are in a tight battle after two quarters. It was their playmaking, the way they gave each other scoring opportunities. That really impresses me. I love seeing unselfish basketball like that. These are the guys getting buckets for the New Orleans Pelicans. have kept it close after one half. And they've been showing off some excellent shooting. And it's ultimately points that win games. So if they can keep this up, there's a great chance they can finish with a victory. Have a look at the leading scores for the Boston Celtics. Game track. Bench points. The coaches are getting the kind of bench production that can make for some interesting rotations. Keep an eye on the substitution patterns in the second half. Player of the half. Ball has the defense figured out and his shots are falling for him. That's a lethal combination that will be hard to overcome. Tatum hasn't had much luck getting into an offensive rhythm. News flash, you're not on fire. Pass the ball. Here's our top plays from the first half. Number two. Number one. 
Thanks for joining us for the halftime report. The second half is about to get started. To Holiday. Nothing going here on that drive. Holiday. Here comes the screen. Short jumper won't fall. Now pass stolen by the Pelicans. Don't rush this now. The game's been tight so far. And score strong take. Underutilized. 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 Am I getting my point across? Let's see more of that. And takes it away. The ball brings the rock up court to Holiday. Ennis Cantor pins it. That kid can block out the sun, Ed. To Hayward. Off the assist. Two points. Take them any way you can get them. Lonzo with it. Up by three. Shot clock winding down. Short jumper misses. No, not a good pass as the Pelicans come up with it. Ball to Favors. No, I missed a short one there. Cantor. And a nice finish at the rim. Well, he finished strong because he was able to initiate the contact. When you initiate the contact first, you bounce off the defender, which balances you at the rim. To Holiday. Ennis Cantor, huge block. Just erasing mistakes left and right. And counted at the rim. And sometimes less is more. Keeping it simple is the best way. Holiday controls the basketball. His guys now trailing by a point. Favors to ball. Here comes the screen. They've slowed down the pace. Now three on the shot clock. Ball can't go down. Smothering defense. Just because you're an elite shooter doesn't mean you need to shoot the ball every possession. Maybe give a half fake crack into the defender Get to the free throw line. See the ball go in the hole. That's out. Last touch by Ennis Cantor. Some lineup changes now for both clubs. To Holiday. Screen, I got your help. Come on, yo. Jason Come on, yo. Tatum with the block. Don't stare him down like that afterwards. Oh, it's blocked. You see, that's why you never give up on the play, Ed. You always stay in the game. Reminiscent of LeBron on Iguodala. I got him. I to got Holiday. Him. Had a chance, but it's no good. Has a look. Tatum shot misses. Third quarter comes to an end. The Celtics have the lead.
It's the Celtics with the ball as we start this fourth quarter, and they'll be looking to finish strong. And when you play stingy defense on one end, the other end takes care of itself. Marcus Smart knocked it away. Oh, some fans should take that ball home as a gift. That's a souvenir. You know, sometimes basketball can become a very beautiful thing to watch. During the regular season, things can get difficult. Energy can be low. The passion at times can even be lower because players are tired. They're fatigued. But today, it's all been good. They're putting in an absolute show with killer efficiency and tremendous effort and intensity. Let's it fly from beyond the arc, smothering D. Now pass, stolen by the Pelicans. Tonight, it may not cost you, but in a playoff game, it will. Here comes the screen, Holiday. A pass, down low to Beasley. Old school, backs his man down for the basket. You've heard it before. Slow and steady wins the race. This approach might be working out after all. Here comes the screen. To Howard. Ah, can't miss those. Holiday in possession. His guys find themselves trailing by a bucket. Screen coming. Holiday with a shot that won't fall. Boston with the basketball. To Marcus Smart. Trying to cash in with the fadeaway. Burns him for the basket. Old school equals high percentage. The Pelicans will take the timeout. That's their first of the final three minutes. That leaves them with one remaining. And I've been seeing a lot of barking back and forth between the players and the fans. I actually like that. I think that gets the players more engaged in the game, in particular sometimes when the game seems like it's dead air. Time to adjust. Both coaches making changes on the floor. Dwight Howard able to recover with the block. Oh, he blocked that with authority. And he hits. I know this is going to sound crazy, but it's so hard to guard a bad shooter. Their form throws your pace off on how you defend it. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. Lonzo Ball matched up with Howard. Couldn't keep it in. Off Lonzo Ball. Celtics have it. Ball with it up top. The deficit is six. Here comes the screen. Ball over to the right side. Has a chance. Beasley's shot won't go. It's easy. Force guys into low percentage shots. That's the reason why we're big into stats. It was all provided to you before the game in the scouting report. Ball into the front court. His club staring up at an eight point deficit. Ingram guarded by Howard. Dwight Howard snatching it out of the air. Ed, that's light work for a guy with his ability. 
it was right there. Yo, big kudos to the defender. It seems like his mere presence in the paint was enough to make the offensive player miss the shot before he even got off the ground. From the painted area, won't go down. No, oh, not a good pass as the Pelicans come up with it. Oh, Lonzo Ball, four out of 10. I don't know if the scouting report has made its way out here yet, but if anything, it says you need to not let him get that close to the rim. Now the Celtics going to use a timeout. It's their first of the final three minutes. That leaves them with one more chance to stop the clock before the buzzer sounds. We have both squads set to make some moves right now. Here comes the intentional foul, but they did have one to give, so no free throws yet. They'll shoot after the next foul. Some players are built to handle these moments. On one end, you just sparked your team, and at the same time, you also got under your opponent's skin. Just want to manage through the emotions here and not take it too far. First one goes down. Good shot. Goes two for two at the line. Whistle stops play, timeout New Orleans. That's their second of the final three minutes. No more timeouts left the rest of the game. Doesn't have the touch, no good. I love when I see a good contest. You're crowding the player's landing space, which naturally makes him worrisome about turning the ankle on that land. It's a victory here for the Celtics, as they get a good win on the road. For Jay Williams and all our crew, I'm Ed Cohen, saying so long for now. This has been a presentation of the NBA on EA Sports. here and I've got your EA Sports post game wrap up. The Celtics put one in the win column with a solid performance. And these are the kind of highlights I love to see. Check out the defensive effort that turns so many shots into really embarrassing moments. Here are the guys who put up the most points for the Boston Celtics. The Pelicans didn't lose big, but it wasn't exactly close either. 
I'm sure they can't help but feel frustrated with the result, but they can't let that feeling linger. Sooner than later, they need to start thinking about the next matchup. Check out the leading scores for the New Orleans Pelicans. Game track. Bench points. The Boston Celtics had the kind of bench production that will make any coach proud. NBA games can be made easier when you're working with depth, and that's exactly what happened here today. Player of the game. Tatum made it his mission to destroy all kinds of shots. Well, mission accomplished. Who was cold? What can you say about a guy like this? Except that he fits the title of this segment. He was definitely cold in this game. Time now for the top plays of the game. Number two. Number one. These are the upcoming games for the New Orleans Pelicans. On behalf of Ed Cohen and Jay Williams, this is Jalen Rose signing off.
this book belongs to me. Journal. Is it okay if I call you that? It's a bit formal, I know, but we've only just met. Let me introduce myself. I'm Isabel Barbara Cook. Most people call me Izzy, not Dad. He calls me Titch. He's such a numpty head. My little brother Ben calls me Isbo. I call him he who chews curtains. He likes red for breakfast and blue for dinner. And then there's Mum, my top tea drinking buddy. I go get my tea and this is Pinky. I think she's jealous of you, Journal. Today's my birthday. Dad made his best cake. Mum and Gran started the singing. Ben gurgled along. I blew out the candles and made a wish. Since I was little, I've always dreamed of becoming a writer. This is where you come in, Journal. A writer writes. No one ever got anything just by wanting it. I guess that birthday wish was a waste then. Bran said writing is about exploring your thoughts. It helps you unlock your feelings. I'd like to write something that will make Gran smile. She always talks about little acorns growing into big trees. Is that to make me feel better about my height? Or about my writing? I want to write a story, but what kind? A romance? Science fiction? A comedy? A drama? Fairy tales? Wait, we're getting somewhere! A fantasy story! So, how do I start my
my fantasy story. Once upon a time... Ugh. No one said this would be easy. Again. From the top. Not so far away. In the land of... Astoria. A place of peace and magic. There lived a girl named... Robin! Everyone knew her by the bright color. Of her purple dress, she was ready to begin her adventure. In fact, she'd been preparing for it her whole life, for she was the only apprentice of the village guardian. Elder Ava. Everyone was very fond of Robin. Her heart was full of curiosity and compassion. The villagers agreed that no one was... Playful as her. Too far away in the land of Astoria. There lived a young girl named Robin. She was playful and loved using her wit and imagination. Suddenly, a faint speck of light floated down and began to buzz around Robin. Hello, little firefly. Did you come for my birthday? Oh, Elder Ava's gonna be so happy! Let's head back to the village. The firefly shared Robin's excitement. We should pick up my gaming marbles on the way back. They are all over the place, because I... I fought a giant with them! Right, Firefly? This marble fell from a passing star. This one was the glass eye of a sea sprite. This one's almost as pretty as you, Firefly. Almost. Come on, Firefly! The village is just a wow. bit further down. Woo! I love doing that. The bridge was an old, creaky affair.
Careful, Robin. Careful. Robin imagines shark fins circling below. Phew! We made it, Firefly. And... Down! Robin knew many secret paths back to the village. Like this one. She loved feeling the roots around her as if the tree was giving her a gentle hug. Nearly there, Firefly. Just one more little slide. Here we go! Woo! The old cargo lift, barely used. Her own secret entrance to the village above. Robin couldn't wait to show her Firefly the village. Maybe run on the rooftops. Or prank the village builder, Look, Firefly. Happy birthday, Robin. I've made a new friend. One of our sacred fireflies. This is a very special thing indeed. Does this mean...? Yes, it is time. Would you fetch me that box, please? Ava was sure that Robin would rise to the occasion. Go ahead, open it. This will store all the magic words you find. Some will stay with you, others are fleeting. They will help you overcome any obstacle. Now, your training is complete. Congratulations, new Guardian of the Fireflies. Guardian? But that's you. Guardian in retirement now. You should head to the Shrine Tree for the other Fireflies' blessing. I'll join you shortly, dear. Oh, before I forget. A little something of mine to mark the occasion. Elder Ava reached inside her pocket and handed Robin a gift. Ava's favorite pendant, set with an emerald. Now off you go. my magic book and all at once robin was surrounded by the hustle and bustle of village life oh how'd you do that wait a minute the power she must have the book robin must be the new firefly go 
bloody in. Robin loved throwing that stones over the rooftops, the but not today. Morning. Look, Robin has the book. Today, the Firefly Shrine was waiting. Go on! She looked over her bustling treetop village. I heard you had a bit of leaf mold. This was all she knew. Yeah, Elder Bassus gave me a poultice. Did it work? Cleared it right And up. it was home. Looks better than ever. Smell that. That's the scent of paradise. I could always use more paradise. Take ten. But inside, she was still curious. Hey, Robin. Happy birthday. No, you can't have a magic book. Good to see you, Robin. But Robin has one. But well, that's different. She's special. But you say I'm special. Careful, careful. No need to rush. about the world that lay beyond. The bridge swayed in the warm breeze. Its slats creaked with a gentle familiarity as Robin crossed it. Seen that book for a while, Robin. You have to see the fireflies. Let me get the gate. Ah, blast! Robin couldn't wait to see the fireflies. Soon they bless her. As new village guardian. What's being guardian going to be like, Firefly? I hope it's adventurous. Let's swing into adventure. Robin crawled through the dank, dark tunnel. It didn't feel like being hugged at all. Bell to announce her arrival. At last, the tree was in sight, home to the fireflies, whose ancient energy kept the village safe from harm. Go on. Show them what you can do. That's it. They're accepting their new guardian. At last, I can get a lion. Glowing light surrounded her. A timeless energy. That birthed stars. And forged suns. Now she was part of it. And so Robin became the new Firefly Guardian. But her biggest adventure was yet to come.
Hello, journal. This time of the year. It gets dark so early. Like the day is just an accident. And the night is how the world really works. Stars and fireflies glowing in the dark. I've never actually seen a firefly. Do you think that matters, Journal? Glowing things are cool, especially in nature. On holiday in Wales, Gran and I would go to the beach and look up at the stars. But one night, we looked down instead. The stars were shining in the water. It was like the sky got flipped upside down. We took off our shoes and socks and waded into the water. As we walked over the pebbles, They glowed beneath our toes. Gran said it was called bioluminescence. Tiny plankton in the water being moved back and forth by the tide. I knew it was just little creatures, but it felt like Magic! I got up very early the next morning. I sneaked into the kitchen, got a jam jar, and went down to the shore to where I'd seen the plankton. evening, I was so excited. I carefully put the jar on my bedside table. And waited for the night. But it didn't glow. I was devastated. I showed Gran the jar. She laughed. Gran always says. You can't put a cork in nature. They need sunlight and nutrients from the tide. Gran knows about those things. She used to be a marine biologist. Gran bought some special algae that would grow at home. We spent the whole day planning it. A house, corals, lights, company, glass stones, water, we took pictures for Gran's photo album, for our future selves to remember.
how the tank took ages to fill. How he took turns stirring the algae in. How happy we were when we had it all set. Just needs time to develop, said Gran. After six days, the algae was ready. I put the tank on my desk and ran my finger through the water, my own bit of magic. That was Mum. She just got a call. She has to leave now. It sounded really bad. I have a weird feeling in my stomach. Something I don't know how to deal with. We just heard that Gran has had a stroke. I don't want to believe it. I can't lose her. Robin woke from a hazy, distant dream. Something unnatural had stirred her from slumber. What's that noise? Eldereva? Robin, a giant creature is attacking our village. Fireflies protected us. There must be something wrong. Get to the tree at once. Hurry! What creature could have caused this? And suddenly, Robin was surrounded by smoke and cinders. As she hurried past the crackling rooftops, her concern grew. Hey, Robin, you gotta hide. You can hide with us. Broken. The lift. No, there's no space. Oh, um, okay. Find your own hiding spot then. She looked at her burning treetop village. This was all she knew. She needed to get to the fireflies. She needed to keep everyone safe. Bridge was beyond one step repair. at a time.
The bridge was beyond repair. Okay. One step at a time. Okay. The bridge was beyond one step at a time. I need to write my way out of this. The bridge was beyond repair. Okay. One step at a time. from beyond the village gates. Robin rushed out to meet it. Soon she would prove herself as the new village guardian. I can do this. Right, Firefly? Right? But she could not deny the creeping Terror. The earth yawned below her. Phew. Made it. That was scary. This tree did not comfort her. It was as scared as she was. With nobody around to extinguish them, fires burned out of control. Some words will stay with you. A strange blaze crackled ahead. Is that fire? I've never seen a flame like that before. Sacred bell lay silent on the ground. Fire 
supplies? Please be here. Please be here. Soon, the dreadful realization dawned on Robin. The fireflies were gone. A new determination rose in her. She would find. Knowledge. Elder Ava! Something took the fireflies. I know. Our people will fall sick without them. There has to be a reason why this happened. I'll find out. I'll be back with answers. I promise. Go, and may the love of this village guide you. Always. Robin took a deep breath. She knew what she had to do. She would find answers. One way or another. The earth could fall away beneath her. But she would not be stopped. This was further than she'd ever been before. And yet it was exhilarating, wondrous, and terrifying. Fear was at her side, and hope in her heart. But things were about to get worse. Much much worse. Is that a dragon? It's big. But Robin would not slow down. Not for crumbling paths. Not for giant monsters. She would get the fireflies back, no matter what. She would catch the dragon. No, wait! She raced forward and leapt. Hello, Journal. We went to see Gran today. In the hospital. It looked like... a big grey fortress. It took us a while to find the right room. Dad let me open the door.
Gran has a big, cozy bed at home. Nothing like the hospital one she was in. Lying in there, she looked so small. I don't remember her being that small. Gran's eyes were open, but she struggled to... find the right words. She just couldn't... Properly. The doctor said it was called dysphasia. It was caused by the stroke. She's usually so talkative, but now she kept stopping. Mid sentence, as if all the words she could find. Were just out of reach. I could see it really frustrating her. And then Gran started coughing. They put an oxygen mask on her. I told her she looked like. Darth Gran. She smiled at that. That reminds me of Gran telling me how she took Mum to the cinema. A long, long time ago, when Mum was my age. A grand story! Gran and Mum went to see my favourite movie. Mum fell asleep. But Gran fell in love with it. When I was little, Gran would show it to me. On a battered video cassette, Gran would laugh at the robots and guess a funny smile. Whenever the scruffy looking smuggler showed up, we'd watch it until we could quote all the best lines. We laughed a lot. Once she gets out, we're gonna watch them all over again. And when the next movie arrives, Gran and I are going to go to the cinema. Together. And soon, Gran and I will be playing games again. I can't wait! This time, I'll be all her high scores. For sure. Gran's a tough cookie. In video games. And everywhere else. 
I heard mom crying in her room. I've never seen her cry. She looked so sad. I didn't know what to do. So I made her a cup of tea. Just like grands, she said. Mum said Gran was getting tired. I said she's getting better. Mum said she felt helpless. I said she was just sleepy. Mum said Gran's going to... I said she's going to be fine. Everything is going to be fine. All you need is a leap of faith. Will Gran still be Gran? after this but she looked so ill gran is going to get better right i made her smile that should help got to keep positive mum needs me to i'll show gran my story mum as well They'll enjoy reading it. I hope it helps. What else can I do? I just need to finish my story. So, where were we? After the dragon attacked the village, Robin set out in search of answers, leaving Elder Ava and her village behind. Her journey took her to a vast desert with a guardian who guards it because it is Robin had pursued the dragon far, far from home. The desert spread out before her. Dunes rising and falling like a sea of gold. Timeless and bewildering. 
glow in the sand. I'll get you safely home. Another firefly. Escaped from the dragon's grass. Where did this wind suddenly come from? There was something very unnatural about it. Robin's will would not break that easily. Hey, come back here. I really need your help. I said go. Okay, see ya. Whoa! <laughs> that sorted Mr. Grumpy Pants out. The yawning cave burrowed deep into the earth. Home to wondrous life. Easily scared. Desert pirates or one eyed troglodyte? I hope not.
Interesting. Interesting. Deep under the desert sands, Robin found. A long, forgotten chamber. The plant recoiled at the sound of her footsteps. Broken remains of greatness voice drifted down to Robin. It didn't listen. I need to find it. Sacred, I said. No one listens to me anymore. the gin. His fury was great. Fortunately, his voice was very, very <laughs> small. <laughs> but the Desert Guardian would not let it rest. <laughs> hey! Stop it! choose to live here.
There had been people here. Once upon a time. What happened to them? Who were they? Maybe I'll find answers here. The dome was empty, but for a pool of water. An inviting place to rest. Robin's thoughts drifted to the people that once had lived here. She was sure they must have been... Philosophers. A distant roar roused Robin from her thoughts. I'll catch you yet, dragon. Ancient statues toppled before Robin. Wise philosophers pondering life's mystery. Behind Robin, a grumpy mumbling could be heard. Ugh, <laughs> oh, him again. Let's move. <laughs> oh, that's better. I do the magic around here. You go away. The Desert Guardian was frantically looking for Robin. Stop hiding from me! He would surely find her eventually. Wouldn't he? Easy! Despite the darkness, Robin's hope guided her.
It must leave. It must. They mustn't know. Hmm. Well, now I'm curious. you so worked up, old windbag? The past. The past. It stays hidden. It must. Oh, the old days. So little left. Best forgotten. Look. Whatever it is you don't want me to see, I'm sure we can... No, 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 no. You cannot go further. Back! How can I get him to listen? Would she break the Jin statue? Or repair it? I was once worshipped here. It was 
Wonderful. But I grew complacent. Now a minute. They warned me that great dangers were coming. And what did you do? Nothing. I believed that there was no danger I could not thwart. I was wrong. They paid the price. My being here must have brought back painful memories. That is as it should be. To feel something, even pain, after all this time. For that, I thank you. I don't need your thanks. But I do need to know if you've seen a dragon around here. It has come and gone. But there is something you should know about that beast. What was that? Softly, my friend. Knowledge will be yours in time. Use it more wisely than I did. Hello, Jano. Today at school, I got my history essay back. I wrote about Vikings. I love Vikings. Mr. Collins didn't like it. I won't be showing this to Mum. Vikings are the best. They're tall and strong. They love conquering and fire. Vikings are basically all kinds of awesome. I could really use some awesome right now. I got her old photo album out. I wanted to see Gran like I remember her when she was awesome. today. When we arrived, Gran was asleep. Her skin looked so thin, almost see-through, like tissue paper. She was Gran-shaped, but empty. I mean, that's silly, right, Journal? It's just Gran. But somehow it isn't. It's not her! She woke up after a few minutes, but 
It didn't seem like she knew who we were. Why? Why is this happening? Why her? It isn't fair. Why, Journal? Gran still can't speak properly. It's so cruel. She can't tell us anything. Like what she wants to eat? Or how she feels? And what's worse? Everyone pretends they're having a real conversation with her, but they're not! You're doing fine, Barbara, the doctor said to her. You just need some time. Hospitals should make you better! Mum had ordered Gran soup and a jacket potato, but when Gran tried to eat by herself, she kept dropping her cutlery. Then I noticed Mum had ordered her mushroom soup. Mushroom! Gran calls them nature's bogeys. reminded mum about the mushrooms she got that look and banged the spoon against the bowl there was lip passing but looking at gran i had to help her i still had some loose change so i ran down to the entrance hall where I'd seen a vending machine on the way in. Egg sandwich! Hurrying back to 305, I couldn't help but grin. They didn't let me back in! Adult talk. Wait outside. That's what they said. So I waited on a bench until Mum came out the room. She said nothing. Just took me to the car. We didn't speak a single word. Not at the car park. Not during our drive home. Dad had made pies for tea. I just wasn't hungry. Dad said I needed to eat. I said, if Gran wasn't going to eat, neither would I. He sent me to my room. I slammed the door really loudly and flumped onto my bed. I still had the egg sandwich. Mushed up. Everything is all mushed up. Dad is 
mean. Mum doesn't care. And Pi is stupid. Maybe I should just try to write my story. Let's see. Last time, Robin was plunging down into the dark below. But the Jin spell slowed her fall. Then and there, Robin started to... Cry. But the darkness didn't care. As Robin hurtled through the darkness, her helplessness no longer made her feel scared. It made her feel frustrated, angry. She wanted answers. Jin's magic gently released her into the unknown. Now where am 